Hi, in this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how to create a tree with the Speed Tree Games Modeler that is designed to be used in a game or real-time application and constructed using the techniques and tools specific to our Games Modeler. My goal is to create an asset that not only looks good, but has a low triangle count. I already have a blank file set up with my cluster maps made and materials loaded, which was demonstrated in previous tutorials. To start off, I'm going to add a trunk generator in my generation editor. Generators are properties that are set up with common settings to help speed up the modeling process. First, I want to set my trunk spine length to an absolute of 20. Then I want to make the trunk thinner by editing the skin radius property. Just going to quickly assign a bark material to my trunk. So once the basic shape is set, I can then work on adding details to my model. For example, for a unique believable tree trunk, it is important to add some displacement. The properties in this group move the vertices of the branch mesh to simulate a rough surface. You have a couple of controls that can help break up the branch surface. There's a primary displacement layer, fine, a secondary displacement layer, shape, for length creases, and then flares. Flares are a special type of displacement designed to simulate the bottom of a trunk, which you can see as I edit these parameters. Now that's done, I'll add my main level branches by creating a big branch generator and making some basic changes, like the amount of branches, branch placement, length, start angle, and radius. OK, that is done. You'll notice that as I build my tree structure for each generator, I will repeatedly make edits to the noise properties. The noise property sets the amount of randomness applied to each angle along the spine length, which basically adds bends and deformations to the branch spine. I like to use these properties to add a more natural organic shape to the trunk and the branches. Next, I'm going to discuss forces. In each of the branch generators, you will notice that under the spine group, you already have a gravity property. If you want to incorporate additional forces to the scene in order to affect the overall shape of your tree, you just need to go to the Forces Push button in your property bar and select the force. Once selected, the icon will appear in the scene. What you're seeing now is the magnetic force, and that I can move it around in the scene by using the Translate tool. If you no longer want to see the icons, you can just hide them. In order to apply the force to a generator, go to the Generator's Forces group and enable it. For demoing purposes, I'm just going to use this already created planar force. The planar force forces the branch spines to grow along a 2D plane based on the direction the force is rotated. It basically flattens the branches. You'll want to use the green and blue curves to control where and how much of the force is applied to the spines. So for this model, I'll add another level of branches, but we'll use the little branches generator this time. Just going to speed this part up as I make some edits.
Okay. That's looking good. The next thing I'm going to discuss are the properties you can use if you want to remove some of the branches on your tree, such as the knockout property and the pruning properties. Knockout randomly removes nodes made by that generator. However, you can use the curves to control where on the spine the knockout is applied. You can see this as I make edits to the curve. Okay. The other set of properties you can use are the prune properties, which removes branches based on their orientation. For example, if I want to get rid of some of the branches in the interior of the tree, I can use the interior property and then control where and how much of the property value is applied by editing the curve. The rest of the prune properties do just what their name implies. Up for removing branches pointing up, down for branches pointing down, general for removing branches at random, and ground for removing branches that intersect the ground plane. Now the key to making a good game tree is to keep the triangle count low while maintaining the visual integrity of the tree. One way to do this is to optimize your branch structure's segments. In each of the branch generators, there's a segmix group with properties which control the amount of length and radial segments that the trunk and branches have. I always try to be mindful of the number of segments there are because it can really add up fast. I tend to leave more segments in the trunk and main level branches and less with each additional branch generator. You'll notice that as I make my edits, I tend to use the plus relative property more than the absolute because this will adapt the amount of segments based on the length or radius of the spine and the value you enter. So if a branch is shorter than another, it will have less segments. I also use the optimization property and normally set it to a low value like 0.25 or 0.5. This property removes segments based on the curvature of the branch. I'm quickly going to finish editing the segments to my branch generators. Okay. Another way to keep the triangle count low is to use cluster maps. For this video, I will be using the cluster maps I created for the upper branches and ones for the twigs and leaves. I'll start by adding a frond generator to use for my branch cluster map. In V8, the fronds use the spine of their parent, in this case the little branches generator. Once you have that set up the way you like, you can save on the triangle count by changing the skin type from polygon to spines only which hides the branch geometry but leaves the spine that the fronds are using. Now I'll edit the fronds shape properties to get the desired look I want. That's looking good. Once all the fronds are set up, it is time to add my leaf cluster maps. You'll notice that once I add my leaf mesh generator to the fronds generator, gray leaf cards will appear to be growing on the fronds. That is because earlier I added anchor points to my frond mesh by using the mesh cutout editor. As you can see here, there are green dots on the branch cluster mesh. These dots are anchor points. And the white handles are there so I can orient them to the direction I want. You want to make sure that you apply the anchor points to all the LOD versions of your mesh so when the LOD level changes, the leaves won't disappear. 
Now that the tree structure is set up, I can focus on fine tuning it in order to achieve my desired final look. Remember the use of your green and blue curves is essential when modeling in Speedtree. This will add a lot more complexity to your model. I'll start by changing my leaf size and orientation. Next I'll edit the leaf mesh's shape by editing my deformation properties, fold, curl, and twist, so that they have more definition and so you don't see the flat edges. Bear with me as I make some more edits. If you believe you have too many leaf and frond meshes that are intersecting, you can enable collision. This will detect which meshes are colliding and then remove them. You can adjust the collision properties in both the frond and leaf mesh generators to fine tune how the meshes in that generator are affected by the collision system. Okay, so here's the final version of my model after I made some additional edits and tweaks. Once your tree is done, you can then add the finishing adjustments that will make this model work in your game engine, such as wind level details, collision objects, and light maps, which is discussed in some of our other tutorials. Well, that is it for this video, and thank you for watching.